What's up guys, Jacob from Fuel Tech USA. We're here for another Tech Tuesday. Today we're gonna cover a more technical topic kind of than we have before. We're gonna go over acceleration fuel enrichment, what each box in there does, because it's, it's a common question and kind of a misunderstood thing that a lot of guys will struggle with or fight with. So we're gonna give you some good explanation on it today. Before we get started, I want to explain that, that what we're doing, we're gonna show you kind of a snip of the FT Manager software. The Vision FT software, the new stuff, is the same way if you're doing milliseconds base tuning like we have been doing. VE will be different, but this covers milliseconds on either platform. There is two main ways you can set up your acceleration fuel enrichment, either by throttle position sensor or map sensor. If you have a throttle position sensor on the car, which most cars do, that seems to be the most efficient way. I highly recommend doing that way. The only time I would do map sensor is if you don't have a TPS on the car and you're trying to make it rev really clean, run really clean, something like that. So the reason we use acceleration fuel enrichment, pump shot, is to help the engine rev clean, usually off idle or part throttle situations where you're on and off throttle a lot. Something you'll, a reason we need to add this is, let's say my O2 is a nice, flat number. You rev the car, you'll get a lean spot on the O2 and then it comes back down. Let's say, I don't know, let's, let's give it a scale. This is 13.5 AFR. We're talking a gas car here. This is up here somewhere in the 14s. The way to fix this is we're gonna need to give it acceleration fuel enrichment when we open the throttle here. So how do we set this up? How do we get this going? How do we get it? revving good. On our uh, example table here, we're going to start on the bottom. It is minimum variation of TPS slash map for pump shot. We're going to do everything like we're talking TPS because not a lot of people use map sensor for this. On our example, we have 4%. What does the 4% mean? If you look beside it, really small, there's some units there. It is 4% per second. It's a rate of change. It's not a certain opening. Oh, I've got to open the throttle 4%. No, it's looking at rate of change. I'm opening at 4% per second. Sometimes a, a way you'll get in trouble with this is if a guy has a noisy TPS signal. So I don't know. Our TPS is nice and smooth. That should be 0%. If you have a noisy TPS signal, it may something like that. These little blips are gonna trigger the acceleration fuel enrichment. This thing will throw extra fuel at it. You don't know why the car runs bad, you chase it forever. Sometimes just a noisy TPS is what you're fighting. Usually for me, a good starting point on this will be a lower number. I'm talking two, three, four percent, maybe five percent at the most, depending on the application. If it's something that's got a really snappy throttle, something with independent throttle body, something with a big, dominator flange throttle body, a nitrous motor. You'll have this normally kind of a smaller number, 2%, 3%, because we want it to catch it fast. We're doing a quick throttle opening. This thing's moving a lot of air really fast. But that two, three, four percent range, that's where you're gonna be on most stuff. Okay, our next box, max fuel pump shot when engine is cold. This can be a tricky one. It sounds like, okay, if I do 100%, I get the same amount all the time. This is actually only an additional fuel added. So if it's a race car only application, dedicated drag car, something like that, 0% is fine. Most of that stuff doesn't have a temperature sensor. You're not gonna change a lot with engine temp. It runs in such a small range. If it's something, I don't know, a endurance circuit car, or something you run a little more, that may matter when you first start it, you have to run it when the engine's cold. Normally I see 50%, 100%, maybe 200% on like a really alcohol heavy fuel, like an E100 or a methanol, something like that. But most race car applications, we're gonna be zero, 20, 30, 40, 50%. And it's something else, it says when the engine is cold. What is cold? It's not something we can define. Cold is 68 degrees Fahrenheit or lower Warm is 176 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. If you're anywhere in between there, it's gonna interpolate. Like if you're right in the middle, 
and you're saying add 100 percent it's going to add 50 percent extra enrichment so let's move to our next box it is excel fuel pump shot reduction when tps or map is above 50 percent what does this mean so if our tps is already i don't know let's say we're cruising 60 percent tps this is a circuit car this is a dirt track car something like that we're already 60 percent so when we do the quick throttle opening there we're going to reduce the amount of pump shot we add the reason for that is think of an engine on idle we're thousand rpm throttles are closed when you blip the throttle that's a huge change in the amount of air that goes through the engine so we need the full pump shot when you're cruising at 60 percent throttle position already you crack the throttle there is more air but it's nowhere near the amount of going from blades closed on idle to like actually open that thing up our default number normally you'll see is minus 50 percent we're going to take away half the amount of pump shot when we're already up there in tps generally i don't see it moved around a lot more than that minus 50 percent fits most scenarios especially the few scenarios it is a car you pedal a lot a drift car dirt car something like that okay our next box is tps slash map variation for max fuel pump shot what does this one mean so this is saying okay our example here has a four percent four percent tps is going to trigger it and the max variation we need is 35 percent do we need to go 35 percent per second no it's actually we need to go four percent per second for at least 35 percent of the tps range so we'd need to go this is what we'll draw tps so we're at zero percent we need to run this thing up four percent per second to at least 35 percent TPS to get the max fuel pump shot. Normally 35 is, is kind of a bigger number depending on what kind of engine is. Most drag race stuff we deal with, we're gonna see 15, 20% there just because the throttle blades are huge for those engines. They're made to run wide open. So it doesn't have to have a huge variation in TPS to need that max fuel added to make it rev good. If you have something with a smaller throttle, something with a restriction in your class, you have to run small throttles, then you may do 35, 40, 45% because you really need to, with a smaller throttle body, make a big change in, in opening to want that max fuel that you're gonna tell it to add. The way our example set up, if we need to get that full four milliseconds of pump shot, how do we get it? So this is saying we need to do this amount of throttle change, assuming we're at 1,000 RPM. We're leaving from 1,000 RPM. This thing's idling. 1,000 RPM, up to 35% throttle, 4% per second the whole way, which is easier to do than you think. You hit, the, you hit the gas, it moves fast. And then that would give us that full four milliseconds. Our next section we're gonna talk about, we're gonna just break this down to one side, the other side of this box at the top. We're gonna go with the lower side first. It says injection time, however many milliseconds. It says four, whatever RPM number. This is your low end. This is the one you're gonna notice the most free revving the car. So the way to set this up is, I don't know, let's say we have a bike engine. This thing idles at 1800 RPM. We don't need that RPM set for 1000 RPM. The engine can never run there. So you'll never get the full pump shot if it's set for 1000 RPM. If I have something that idles at 1800, I'm gonna set this up for 1600 RPM. If you have something like a, something really tame engine or a big, big stroke, something like an aircraft uh, airboat thing, thing idles at 800 RPM, then you could do this lower number at 700 RPM. You're gonna want it set a little lower than your idle, no matter the application. Okay, so the injection time above it, what's a good starting point? It depends setup to setup. Most stuff, if we, if we don't have a huge injector, if we don't, we don't have two 720s, an alcohol, pro charger car, something like that, I generally like to start about twice the amount of fuel you idle with. So if this thing idles with two milliseconds, I would start with four milliseconds. This, this feature is more of a feel, okay, does it make the car run better than an exact number, like you must have this amount to make it perfect. 
but normally I start about twice the amount of fuel you idle with, and that's gonna be close to making it rev good, rev snappy, something like that. But you can move it up and down. You're gonna play with it, experiment with it. And something to think about here is don't get so hung up on an AFR number. So we, we're not trying to keep the O2 flat right here. Let me, let me clear out what I got. So let's say you got a nice tame gas car and we're idling at 14 AFR. That's flat, it looks like a slope, that's flat. That's gonna be hard to make your car run like that. But let's say perfect scenario, 14 AFR. We're not trying to make this thing perfectly flat during acceleration enrichment. Normally something you'll see is a slight rich dip. It's not gonna be much, that might be, we'll call it 13.7. 13.8 AFR. There's no point in trying to make this super flat. Most of the time, the engine's gonna respond better when you see a slight dip rich on the O2. So something to keep in mind, it is a kind of a subjective number. It's gonna be what makes it respond good. What makes, what, what do you think makes the car rev good? You know your engine, does it pick up fast RPM when you open the throttle? Let's say we start with like the four milliseconds, our kind of baseline example number, it's double what it idles with. Okay, we rev it, we try it, we check the O2, this thing goes 18 AFR. So you think, wow, this thing's really lean. Sometimes we gotta take big swings to figure out where we're at. If I saw something like this, I would assume, okay, this thing's gonna need more fuel. I would take a big swing, give it six milliseconds. Try it again. If we're still 18, 19, 20 AFR, the thing runs terrible. We're probably on such a rich side that it's misfiring. So let's say we take our four milliseconds, we cut it in half, make it two milliseconds. Now we get 12 AFR from 18, even though we just took fuel away. It was so rich, it misfired. The O2 sensor lied to you. From that point, keep trimming fuel back. We're just trying to get a slight rich dip, nothing crazy. We don't want this thing to go 14 to 12. They're not gonna run good like that. So moving on to the other side here, this is our higher RPM range. This is also kind of very setup specific. It's gonna be, if this thing's uh, automatic, drag car, drag car only application, a lot of the times we have zero up there. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be pedaling the car up there. If we do, the run's thrown away. Or it's such a fine line of fuel that this thing's riding on to run perfect. We don't want this thing adding extra fuel up top. Even if our TPS moves a little, this is 100%. Even if it dips down a little and comes up, we don't want it to add extra fuel there. We want this thing to run the same. We know the driver's wide open. Sometimes race cars vibrate. Sometimes throttle leakage moves a little. So up there, it's, it's common to have a tiny number on a drag car, zero, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, something like that. And with that kind of wide open, drag race scenario we're talking about, this doesn't even have to be the rev limiter RPM that you're at. It could be normally lower than the limiter. This thing goes 8,500, we might have it just stop enrichment after 8,000. Now, something more complex is gonna be a drift car, a dirt car, um, even a stick shift car with a clutch, something you're doing a lot of off the throttle, on the throttle. This number is gonna matter more up there because it's normal for you to be half throttle and go back on, half throttle and go back on. So I like to start, like in our example here, we got four on one side, we have 0.8 on the other side. We like to start way less than half. I do, personal experience. I would say we got four milliseconds over there, 8.8 .8 over here, that's 25%-ish. That's a little less than 25%, but it's gonna be a feel thing. That's gonna be hard to figure out without running the car. The first side's gonna be Sit in one spot, free rev it, free rev it. That spot's gonna be more noticeable when you're on the track, when the, you, you'll have driver feedback. Oh, I let off the throttle, I get back in, it falls on its face. We need to see, does it dip really rich? Does it go lean? That kind of thing, and then fix it from there. So our last thing we're gonna look at is the decay max pulse number. This one's set up for zero and zero. It's not gonna modify fuel in any way. What this does, this is kind of the inverse of the acceleration fuel enrichment. It's gonna see a throttle rate of change we have on the bottom there, it's a percentage per second, but it's throttle closing this time. This is normally 
something you would do when you're really nitpicking a setup. Or it comes through a part of the map that's really rich when it's off throttle. Like if you have a drift car and the part of the map it runs through when it comes back down is really rich, this can be a way to take fuel away. Normally, I would start with very small numbers here. I'm talking like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 milliseconds. And then when it sees that quick throttle closing, that'll pull some fuel away from the map and help keep it, keep it running. Most stuff when, on D-cell, when it goes lean, it doesn't care, it runs fine. When they go rich is when they hate it, they wanna, oh, I, I get done with a run and the thing wants to die, turn itself off. More times than not, they're really rich. They don't wanna run when they're really loaded up with fuel. So that, that was a good kind of in-depth, what does each box do, why do I move it, gives you guys a good way to start playing with it. It's very setup specific. A lot of the times if we have a, something with individual throttle bodies, a nitrous motor, something we're only doing the tuning off TPS, we may have a way smaller number as our max pump shot because we're already basing everything on the throttle position. So if the tune is really good, really close, then it's gonna get there faster when it runs through the map. We already know, okay, I'm at 10% throttle and 3000 RPM. That's gonna be way closer already than a map-based tune. So the map-based tunes, a lot of the times, they're a little more heavy on acceleration fuel enrichment, but this is just a, just a ballpark, just to get you guys going on it. If you're a drag guy, something to keep in mind, normally we have big injectors. We're assuming this thing's on alcohol. You got a set of 820s. We're idling this thing at the bare minimum it idles at, let's say 1.7 milliseconds. I wouldn't start with double there because if we do four milliseconds of an 800 pound an hour injector, that's a ton of fuel. Normally you have big 720s, 820s, even 520s. Your, your first number, the, the biggest number there, more than likely you're gonna be 0 0.4, 0 0.8, less than one. You don't need a ton more fuel from that big of an injector. Where if you have something that has stock injectors, it's on gas, something like that. This thing idles at three milliseconds. You might need six, seven, eight milliseconds there to start with. This is just a, just a guideline for you guys. And, and something to keep in mind, this can be one of the first things you play with when you get the car running. And okay, oh, it revs clean now, everything's good. A lot of the times, once you get the map tuned in better, you've ran the car more, you may have to go back and adjust this. Once you get your tune closer, this may have been fixing somewhere that was wrong on the map. So once you get it right, then you may end up taking some away, adding some, but it's gonna take a couple of run times to get this thing really like perfect. So that pretty much covers everything in detail, all the boxes you're gonna be moving around. I hope you guys didn't fall asleep. This is gonna be a subjective thing. We can't give you a perfect number to put in. That's why we're telling you what it does, how to adjust, you guys can take it from there. If you guys have any questions, you wanna leave a comment below, we'll get back to you and we'll see you next Tuesday.